Hi, welcome to Physics Waves. It's Mr. Dimi. Today we will discuss about the defects of vision and its correction. Our human eye is like a professional camera. The light enters the human eye through a transparent portion called cornea. Behind cornea, there's iris. This iris is a dark muscular diaphragm that controls the size of the pupil and the pupil regulates the amount of light entering the human eye. And in this video you can see how the size of the pupil changes when the amount of light entering the human eye changes. And when the light passes through the eye lens, it is actually a crystalline lens, it can adjust its focal length. When the light passes through the eye lens, an inverted image is formed on the retina. Our retina consists of a large number of optical sensors. These optical sensors will convert these light signals into electrical signals. And these signals are sent to brain through optic nerves. And our brain will process the signals and will produce the image. Now we look at a professional camera. It consists of a convex lens. And after that, we can see a pressure in the diagram. The amount of light entering the camera is adjusted by adjusting the size of this aperture. If the light is too bright, you will reduce the size of the aperture. Otherwise, the image will be too bright and it won't be clear. If the light is dim, then you will increase the size of the aperture. Otherwise, the image will be too dark. And that you can see in this diagram. Actually, the aperture is very similar to the pupil in human eye. And when the light passes through this lens, an inverted image is formed on a screen. And these screens consist of a large number of optical sensors. And these sensors will convert these light signals into electrical signals. And these signals are sent to a processor. And this processor will process the signals and will produce an image. And as you all know, our human eye consists of two lens. We have two eyes. So actually, two images are formed. So these two images are combined in our brain and it will produce a single image. And we all know, we are all very familiar with dual lens cameras. You know, most of the phones consist of dual lens, triple lens, etc. So the same thing is happening. In a dual lens camera, two images are formed and these two images are combined in a processor and will produce a single image. So the advantage of two eye lens is it can collect more light. So the image will be more clear. Now we will study about lens. There are two types of lens. One is convex lens and the other is concave lens. First we will study about convex lens. So before we study the convex lens, just have a look at this diagram. Here you can see it's a simple mechanism to collect rainwater. If you are going to collect rainwater using a jar, if you just keep it outside, you cannot collect large amount of water because its opening is too small. But if you are using a mechanism like this, a large cloth is used over here and rainwater falling on this large area is converged to a single point. So if you are keeping the jar there, you can collect large amount of water. Why? The rainwater falling on a large area is converged to a single point. And in a convex sense, the same thing is happening. When a parallel beam of light, parallel to the principal axis, passes through this lens, this light rays will be converged. It will be converged like this. It is converged to a point. And this point is called the principal focus. So, when a parallel beam of light rays passes through a convex lens, these light rays will be converged to a point called principal focus. And the distance between the principal focus and the center of the lens is called focal length. The power of a convex lens is expressed in positive powers. Now we will study about concave lens. A concave lens is also called a diverging lens. Convex lens is converging lens. A concave lens is called a diverging lens. Have a look at this diagram. This diagram is just the opposite of the first diagram. If we pour water from this jar to a shape like this, you can see water coming from a single point will be diverged. It will diverge to all directions. So you can see here water coming from a single point is diverged. Why? Because of the shape of that structure. 
in a concave lens when a parallel beam of light passes through this concave lens after refraction these light rays will be diverged it will move like this it will be diverged and now we can see we can compare the similarity between the water coming from that jar and the parallel beam of light so the parallel beam of light when it passes through a concave lens these light rays will be diverged and in a convex lens when a parallel beam of light passes through a convex lens it will be converged to a single point so convex lens and concave lens its properties are just opposite a convex lens is used as a magnifying glass but if you look through a concave lens the image will be diminished that means it looks smaller how to identify a convex lens and a concave lens it's very simple convex lens the center part will be thick and the sides will be thin so if you just you know like move your fingers through this portion if the center is thick and the sides are thin it is convex and in a concave lens center portion will be thin and the sides will be thick see the difference convex center part is thick sides are thin concave lens center part is thin and the sides are thick and the power of the convex lens is plus and the power of a concave lens is minus actually you can easily identify a lens whether it is a convex or concave only what you need to do is just looking at an object move the lens towards right or left if the image and the lens are moving in the same direction it is a concave lens if the image and the lens moves in opposite direction it is a convex lens i will show you a simple technique to check whether a lens is convex or concave when you look through this lens you can see the image is magnified so this is a convex lens you know a convex lens is a magnifying glass there is one more method you just move the lens towards right or left or in any direction if the lens and the image moves in the opposite direction here you can see when i move the lens to the right the image is going to the left and when i move the lens to the left image is going to the right see once again both lens and the image moves in the opposite direction so this is a convex lens now i will show you how to identify a concave lens if you when you look through this glass and if you move the glass to the left you can see image also going to the left and when you move the glass to the right you can see image also going to the right but here you can see the shift is less okay that means the lens is not that much powerful but when i look through the bottom of this glass bottom portion of this glass you can see when i move the lens to the right image is going to the left see when i move the lens to the right image is going to the left and when i move the lens to the left image is going to the right so in the bottom portion this glass is using a convex lens and on the top it is using what a concave lens so actually this person is suffering from both myopia and hypermetropia and this is an old age problem and you can also check you know, the power of the lens if the shift is more the lens is more powerful if the shift is less shift in position is left that uh, like you know that power will be less so you can see uh, in the right eye that convex lens is not that much powerful but uh, in the left portion we can see the shift is more so this lens is more powerful okay so this is an easy way to check whether a lens is convex or concave or in, just by looking at the glass you can identify whether it, whether a person is having myopia or hypermetropia or suffering from both so this is an easy way to identify whether it is a convex lens or a concave lens the power of a lens the power of a lens depend on its curvature if you have a thin lens and a thick lens thin lens will be having less power and the thick lens with the more curvature will be what will be having more power to be simple if you look at my hand if this is a convex lens you can see the curvature and now i am going to increase the curvature so this lens will be more powerful and this lens will be what less powerful and now you look at the image in the first image you can see it's a thin convex lens and its focal length is 20 cm there is a simple equation to calculate the power power is 1 by focal length so in that image we can see the focal length since it is 20 cm its power will be equal to 1 divided by 0.2 why 0.2 20 cm is 0.2 that is equal to 5 diopter diopter is a unit of power power of a lens 
and you can see it's mentioned plus y. Why? Because it is a convex lens. And also you look at the um, ray diagram. It's converged less. But in the second diagram you can see it's a thick lens with more curvature. So automatically its power will be more. And you can see the ray diagram. If you look at the ray diagram it is converged more in the second diagram. That's why its focal length is less. So a lens with more power can converge the light rays more. And you can see in the diagram, uh, the focal length of the second lens is 10 cm. In the first lens, it was 20 cm. The second lens, it is only 10 cm. So, when, when you increase the power, focal length decreases. So, and if you calculate the power of that uh, co second convex lens, it will be 1 by 0 0.1, that is equal to plus 10 diopter. So, what you can see from this one is more power, less focal length. Less power, more focal length. And the power of a convex lens is plus and the power of a concave lens is minus. The ability of eye lens to adjust its focal lens is called the power of accommodation. The minimum distance at which objects can be seen most distinctly without strain is called the least distance of distinct vision. It is also called the near point of the eye. For a young adult with normal vision, the near point is about 25 cm. The farthest point up to which the eye can see objects clearly is called the far point of the eye. It is infinity for a normal eye. Defects of vision and their correction. There are mainly three main types of defects of vision. First one, myopia, also known as nearsightedness or short sight. Second one, hypermetropia or far sightedness. It's also known as long sight. And the third one is press myopia. Now we will discuss about myopia. A person with myopic eye can see nearby objects clearly but cannot see objects far away from him. So for a person with myopic eye, his far point is nearer than infinity. Myopia usually occurs with small kids or youngsters and this is the reason why most of the students they cannot see what is written on the board if they are sitting on the back side of the class. So a myopic person cannot see objects which are far. In a myopic eye, the eye lens can focus the light beams coming from a nearby objects and you can see the light beams coming from or the light rays coming from a nearby objects they are diverging. So the eye lens is able to focus this diverging light beams into our retina. But you know, if the object is far, the light beams are almost parallel. So if you want to focus this parallel beam of light beams into your retina, you need only less power. But in a myopic eye, the eye lens cannot reduce its power to focus these light beams to retina. In a myopic eye, the image of a distant object is formed in front of the retina. So you need to just you know, shift the position of the image. So what we can do, just keep a diverging lens, a concave lens in front of our eye. So these parallel beams will be diverged. So automatically the image will be formed on the retina. And the power of the concave lens can be selected by an ophthalmologist. Now we will discuss hypermetropia or Far sightedness. This is also known as long sight. A person with hypermetropic eye cannot see objects which are close to him, but he can see objects which are far. This is also known as far sightedness or long sight. If you look at the ray diagram, you can see the light beams which are coming from a far object are parallel, and you need only less power to focus these light beams into the retina. But if the object is close to us, the light beams are not parallel, they are diverging. In this case, the eye lens has to increase its power. But a person having this defect, a person with hypermetropic eye, cannot increase his power of the lens after a certain limit. So because of this, the image will be formed behind the retina. So now how we can fix this? If we keep a converging lens in front of the eye, now this eye lens, this converging lens will converge this light beams more. 
Now the eye lens is able to focus the image onto the retina. So once again, I will repeat, a person with hypermetropic eye can see far objects clearly but cannot see nearby objects clearly. Why? If the light beams are coming from a far objects, they are parallel and the eye lens need only less power to focus it on the retina. And there is no problem with this eye lens if the person is having hypermetropia. But if the object is close, the light beams are not parallel, they are diverging. Now the eye lens need more power to focus it on the retina. So how to fix this one? So if we keep a convex lens in front of the eye, now the convex lens will converge this light beams more. So because of this converging, like you know, the image will be formed on the retina and the power of this lens can be selected by an ophthalmologist. Press biopia. The power of a combination of eye lens gradually decreases with aging. So if a person is having this defect, he won't be able to see objects clearly if it is close to him. This is the reason why all people when they read newspaper or a book, they will keep the book like this because they cannot see if it is close to the eye. Because for a normal person, near point is 25 cm, but if a person is suffering from press myopia, this near point receives away, so he cannot see if it is close to the eye. And uh, in some cases, a person may suffer from both myopia and hypermetropia. This all happens because why? Our eye lens decreases its ability to adjust its power. This happens in aging. The ciliary muscles loses its power. It becomes weak. This is the main reason. So if a person is suffering from both myopia and hypermetropia, they have to use bifocal lens to fix this problem. In order to fix myopia, they will use concave lens. And in order to fix hypermetropia, they will, fix, they will use the convex lens. And you know how you read a textbook. When you read, you will be looking down like this. You will be looking down. And if you are looking down, the object is here. The book is close to you. So if you are suffering from hypermetropia, you cannot see objects which are close. So in order to fix this, you have to use convex lens. So that's why if you look at that glass, your specs, you can see the convex lens will be in the bottom portion. And when you look at the far objects, you are looking like this. Your view is going like this. And you know if a person with myopic eye, he cannot see objects which are far. So how to fix myopia? You know, you have to use a concave lens. So that's why they will use the concave lens on the top region of your specs. Okay. So they will be using both lens, convex and concave. Convex lens will be on the bottom portion and concave lens will be on the top. So with this, you can fix both problems. Okay. Myopia and hypermetropia. Okay. Thank you.